Ah. Oh, it's on again. <laughs> I can tell you I don't look like Tom Cruise at all. <laughs> Who thinks Simon looks like Tom Cruise? No, no, the, the, the church has spoken, Simon, unfortunately. Hey, good to see you, church. Give someone next to you a high five and say, it's good to see you here. Turn back to the other person and say, I can't believe you made it. <laughs> Turn back and say, I believe it. <laughs> hey, it's uh, so good to see you. And um, I love our church. I love what God's doing in the people. Last night, all our young adults had a big picnic and where they all gathered together. And I uh, know a group of you were uh, combined at a combined churches thing, praying for our city and praying for our nation. And also our kids workers were down in Milton Keynes being trained to be the best kids leaders they can be. So it was a huge day yesterday. But you're here today. And that's the most important thing. And we continue our theme of Mission Possible. A bit of a play on the whole theme of the movies and spy and action film of Mission Impossible because uh, we believe we serve a God who can do the impossible. Amen? And so that's why it's Mission Possible. And I want to encourage you this month for you to really believe in your heart and your spirit that God has a mission for you. Amen? Turn to the person next to you and say, God has a mission for you. <laughs> he has a mission and a purpose. Not only does God love you, not only were you conceived when you were conceived in your mother's womb, I know that's a horrible thought for some of you, but not only were you conceived, did God delight in you and take pleasure in you and every waking moment of your life, he has watched over you and delights and is pleased with you. Not only that, but he gives you a purpose as well. Amen. And there's a mission that he has for you. There's a mission that God has for Connect Church. There's a mission that God has for the churches of Birmingham. There's a mission that God has for the church of the world. There is a mission that God has for us, and it is mission. Come on, church, stay with me today. You've got to stay on your toes. It is mission. Because all things are possible with God. And the reality is we face all sort of impossible situations. And that's the story we're looking at in our Bibles today, Joshua chapter 6. And if you weren't here last week, we started Joshua chapter 6. And we looked at Joshua and God gave him, gave him vision before he saw the breakthrough. But today we're going to look at the next, step, the next step in Joshua chapter 6. For those of you may be visiting here today for the first time in church, the, the real quick summary is God had his people, the Israelites, and he had a promise for them to enter into this certain land, which is today Jerusalem. But back then it was called Canaan. And God had a promise for them. He'd promised it for over 500 years. And who knows when God promises, He delivers. And, uh, and so if He's promised something in your life, I want to encourage you, hang on to it. Don't stop believing. Don't stop trusting in that word because He will fulfill what He's promised. Amen. And so God had promised that God would get them to this land. But to do that, they had to cross the River Jordan. We, we focused on that a few weeks ago. The Jordan River, 45 meters wide. God dried it up and they miraculously crossed to the other side. But now they're on the other side and in the promised land, they face an impossible situation. They face a city called Jericho. And this city of Jericho, archaeologists say that they had, it was like a 10-story high wall. They say in the vicinity of 45 feet high, this wall that was impenetrable. And the Jericho, the citizens of Jericho felt very safe in there because there was nothing, nothing humanly possible that could happen to penetrate that wall. So it looked impossible. But who knows, our God is a God of the impossible. Amen. It is mission, mission possible. And so this is the moment where Joshua gathers his people. And we heard about in chapter 5 where God came and spoke to him, gave him a vision. But now we're going to pick up the story in chapter 6 of Joshua. Are you with me this morning? So if you've got your Bibles or you've got your phones or your tablets, i got a new phone this week. It's called a Hawaii. How are we? No, I, I, what, what was it? A wow, way wow, wow way. Wow way, yes, that's it. <laughs> and, and it's cool because it counts my steps. Actually, I should put it on me while I preach because then I can... Get my steps up and I can be, uh, oh, that's awesome. All right. I've just put about 40 steps on right there. Who knows everywhere we set our feet, God gives us. Amen. 
So I like that. How are we? Anyway. So we pick up the story in Joshua chapter 6. Humanly possible, you will face things. If you're going to enter into the promises that God has for you, you're going to face moments that look impossible. They look impossible, but they are not, po- not impossible. Amen? They may look impossible to our own eyes, but in God's sight, they are possible. Mission possible. Amen? So we pick up the story in chapter 6, verse 2. The writing of my Bible is getting smaller. It says, focus on Jesus. All right, it says, march around the city. So God comes to Joshua, and in this impossible moment, God gives him a plan. God gives him a strategy. He'd already seen the vision, but now God has to give Joshua a strategy. And God wants to plant in you great visions, but he also isn't just about big visions. He's very organized. He's very ordered. He's very structured. And he's very strategic. Not only is God relational and God is love, but he's also very strategic. And he's more passionate about the purposes he has for you and our church and our city than even we are. And he wants to give us strategies to see the breakthroughs and the miracles. Amen. So God comes to him and this is his strategy that he gives. This is the plan that he gives to Joshua. And the truth is, if you've watched any Mission Impossible movie or any action spy movie, any drama movie where the bad guys have to chase, uh, sorry, the good guys have to chase the bad guys, or like the Avengers, there's some bad person out there that wants to come and take over the planet Earth. How many times does that happen in a movie? It's like, I feel like I'm watching the same movie over and over again, and we always wonder, is it, what's going to happen? But the good guys win in the end. Sorry if I spoiled the latest Avengers movie for you. And so... We always see, but they always come up with a plan. They always sit around the table and they think, what wires need to be cut? How are we going to access the building? How are we going to dress up as a disguise to get the information we need? There's always a plan. And that's what's happening here. God is giving Joshua the plan to take the impossible city of Jericho. Amen. So it says in verse 2, it says, March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Everyone say six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. That was kind of the musical instrument of the day. Everyone, if you, were, if you played the ram's horn, you were cool. You were the cool kid. You were like, you know, on the edge of trend. And it says, then on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. In two weeks' time, I'm going to talk about the seventh day anointing. It's going to be an awesome service, but that's for two weeks. On the seven priests, walk around the city seven times and blow the trumpet. When you hear the sound of a long blast on the trumpet, have the whole army give a loud. Oh, come on, church. Give a loud. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. This is God's strategy. This is God's plan to Joshua. And the truth is that God has a plan for your life. Amen. I, I'm, I'm a bit of a James Bond fan. I love Daniel Craig particularly at the moment. He's a great James Bond. And, uh, and I love the movies. But he always, before he has to go out on the mission, he has to go to M to get the direction and the plan. I think we've got a picture on the, on the screen here of uh, Daniel Craig with M. Have we got that? Just click down. <laughs> Thank you, lovely. Well, anyway, just trust me that Daniel Craig... There, oh, oh! who remembers the A-team? I love it when a plan comes together. Of course, not every movie is quite like that. We've got the Avengers there. He never has a plan. In fact, in this moment, he say, they say, have you got a plan? He goes, I've got part of a plan. But God's not like that. He has a full plan. Amen. And so if you go, keep going, the next slide. Hey, there it is. So 007 has to go to M and M gives him the plan of the mission. And the truth is for you, I want to encourage you. You have not just a director of a spy agency. You have the director and the author of all the universe. Amen. You have not just M, but you have the master of the universe, the master of all things on your side. And he wants to download to you. He wants to give you the plan for your life and your mission that should you choose to accept it. 
And I love these scriptures here that talks about the plan for your life. God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Who's declaring it over your life? The Lord. He knows the plans he has for you. They are plans. They are good plans to prosper you. They won't harm you. They are plans to give you a future. Amen. Your future is safe in God's hands. He has the master plan. And I want to encourage you this morning. The truth is, oh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm the type of person that likes to plan things. I'm, I'm pretty organized I'm, and I like to plan my calendar. And as a family, we'll sit down and we'll look at the week ahead and what's coming up and who's got to be where and what meal we're cooking and what groceries we need to buy and we'll budget. We're pretty planned. But my plans are limited. My plans have a limitation. But God's plans are unlimited. Amen? And the truth is God has a plan for you. And just like in this moment, he gives Joshua the plan. But the reality is this was a stupid plan. Hang on. Did he just say God's plan was stupid? It was stupid in Joshua's eyes. It was an illogical plan in the soldier's eyes. What would happen in ancient times when a city like this was going to be invaded, they would either try and uh, basically starve the citizens so they would surround the city and starve them out. Or they would try and dig and tunnel underneath the walls with fire and tar and get in through that way. Or the third way was they would try and build a ramp up over the wall so they can get up and in. All of those three ways were the military strategies that were logical, that were normal, that everybody would do at the time. But that would take months and also would lose soldiers in that whole process. What I want to encourage you with today is God's plans will not seem logical to you. Come on, church. If, if you are planning your life and it's all ordered and it all makes sense to you, then maybe you haven't left room for God's plans. For Isaiah says, His ways are, His thoughts are, and I, I, I want to plan and I want to have thoughts, but there's a limitation to them. And for Joshua and the soldiers, they had their thoughts. We could do it this way. We could do it that way. Maybe we're going to do it this way. But God comes in and goes, hey, guys, there's a higher plan here. There's a higher way of living. And, and I want to encourage you, give yourself space to be, basically put your plans aside and just go pray this prayer. God, I want your plans in my life. I want your plans in my life because I acknowledge your plans are higher than mine. I acknowledge that your ways are higher than my ways and I want your plan in my life. Amen? And that's what we see here. That's what we see happening here because in the, in the natural, it did not make sense. Hang on. You want us to get up in the morning. You want us to gather the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God. You want us to get the priest, get the worship team out front. Hey, didn't our worship team do a great job today? Come on, give them a big round of applause. What well on, Rubes. What well on, Andy. And, uh, and you want us to march around the city of Jericho, march around the walls, these walls that you want us to bring down to have the victory over. We're going to march around, but then you're going to come back and just set up camp again. That's the strategy. That's the plan that God gives them. And for... You and I, sometimes God will speak things into our life and we won't fully understand it. It won't make sense. But you're not meant to make sense of it. You're meant to trust in faith and obedience. And that is my experience is when you see the breakthroughs. Is when the plan of God, when God says, whenever God said something to us to do something or try something, it's always been a little bit outside normal because God is not normal. Amen. When, when God spoke to us about leaving Australia, your season is up. It's time to move on. Nothing in our logic ever planned to end up in Birmingham, England. It wasn't part of our plans. It was not logical. How we've ended up here, what God has done, it is illogical because his plans are higher than my plans. I'm glad I haven't lived my life according to my plan because it would be normal and safe and comfortable and it would be a nice life but it'd be my life, my ways, my plans. But church, we've got we to have a passion that says, God, I want your plans. I want, I want the higher plan for my life. Come on. And so we see that. We see God getting the plan to Joshua and Joshua responds. The next thing we see Joshua doing, it says that he acted immediately. 
He executed the plan. He did it immediately. He didn't wait. He didn't call a committee meeting. He didn't think, well, let's just, let me just pray about that for a year. <laughs> no, he did it immediately. As we read the next uh, verse 6, it says, So Joshua called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry the trumpets in front. And he ordered the army, advance. Everyone say advance. March around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. He acted straight away. And you know, when God speaks, we need to act straight away. I've found in my life that when I hesitate or hold back from when God's asked me to do something, I miss out. But when I respond straight away, that's when the breakthrough comes. That's when I flow in His plan. Even talking this week with Ruby, uh, Ruby's just kind of doing some great things at the moment. She's running a Christian union at a school and uh, stepping up and leading worship and a youth leader. She's just really stepping into who God's called her to be. And uh, every day she reads a Bible and, and uh, we talk about that. And she will drive, I was driving to school the other day and she goes, Dad, I've just learned. Oh, that's right. Because last weekend, Trace and I were speaking at a, a church camp up in Wales for another church in the, in the West Midlands. And, and uh, I was preaching the Saturday night. And I was going to have people respond and come out the front. And we were going to lay hands and pray for people and see God do amazing things. And I, I, said, I said to the kids, I said, just be ready. Because if God speaks to you, you come out, you step out of your seat and you pray for people. And so uh, Ruby was just telling me a story that she was standing there. And as, you know, a whole heap of people responded, God just said to her, go and pray for that person. And so she left her seat and she prayed for that person. And she just said, Dad, I'm just learning. You've got to, if God talks, you've got to do it straight away. Come on now. Come on. You just got to do it straight away. <laughs> but sometimes, I know certainly when I was a child, and I certainly, some, you know, sometimes as a parent, when I ask my children to do things, they don't do things straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's be children of God that respond quick. If he asks us to do something, do it straight away. Don't leave the dishes sitting out for three days. <laughs> you know, but I just wonder sometimes when we're like that with God. God's trying to set up the higher plan in your life. And he just, he just asks us to do little things. It's just the little things actually I've found that make a big difference. But when we just leave him on the side, because he's going, come on now, do it straight away. Act straight away and advance. And that's what Joshua says to the soldiers, advance, advance. And then the third and final thing is keep on marching. Keep on marching. So we see the picture here where they gather the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God. And in, from verse 11, it says this. So they carried the Lord, uh, they carried the ark of the Lord around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day. They marched around the city once and they returned to camp and they did this for six days. Everyone say six days. And this is really where I want to encourage us this morning, you know, and I get the picture of the soldiers. You know, it would have taken a while to get ready. All right, any, any people in the house take a while to get ready to get out of the house? <laughs> it would have taken a while to get ready. They, the priests would have had to put on their gear. They would have had to have got the ark ready and the people that were going to carry the ark, they would have had to have got the worship team ready to go out first and lead the way. They would have had, to have had to have got all in their formation to follow the ark of the presence of God. And so it would have taken a little while to organize this and get it all ready. And then they set out to walk around the city. Now, uh, theologians say that the city was about 8 to 10 hectares uh, around in, in size and I, I kind of tried to calculate this week what that would be. And at a steady pace, hang on, I'll put my phone in so I get my steps. At a steady pace, 
walking around the city of Jericho, it was approximately 30 to 40 minutes. Now, give or take, because it was, there was 40,000 soldiers, so that would take a little while to, from start to finish. There was trumpets blowing. There were people walking everywhere. So, so let's, let's just say around about an hour it took to walk around Jericho. All right, it's a good walk, and I'm sure they had their phones on them and were getting their steps up. <laughs> but about an hour, that's why in two weeks' time, we're going to see on the seventh day when they went seven times, that's why it was physically possible to do that on that day. But about an hour, about an hour to get up and walk around the city, to get up and worship, to get up and do the same thing every day for six days. And not see one single change. Not see any difference made whatsoever. I wonder what it would, like, would have been like when they returned to camp on that first night. Did they, I mean, I mean, they've just seen the Jordan River dry up. They've just seen amazing miracles. They know who God is. So maybe, maybe they're more spiritual than me. But for us mere mortals, I would have gone out expecting, come on. God said these walls are coming down and we're going to go up. We've got the worship team. We're being obedient. God's given us the plan. Where are those walls are coming down? Walk around, get back to camp. Oh, nothing happened. All right, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. And so they sit around the camp and says there that they got up early again in the morning. There's something good to get up early and seek God. Something good to get up early and read your Bible. There's something powerful about getting up early and giving your praise and worship to God before your day starts. Like I said last week, don't go on Facebook. Go on Facebook first in your day. There's something powerful that we see here as they get up early and they go out on the second day and they walk around another hour around the city and they get back. No change. Have you ever been in that place where you're believing for a miracle but there's no change? I put it to you today that perhaps there's just faith and patience inherits the promises of God, Hebrews says. Perhaps God is trying to teach something in the people that Romans chapter 5 verse 3 says that perseverance in us produces hope and hope produces character. Perhaps as they were walking, there was a character process that was happening. Oh, look, these walls haven't come down yet, but I'm just going to keep taking it step by step because God hasn't asked me to bring the walls down. He's just asked me to walk and walk and walk and worship. If I can just walk and worship, he'll in his right time, he'll bring the walls down. My job's not to bring the walls down. My job's just to walk and worship. They get home after camp, day two. Oh, nothing happened. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. Come on, let's go. Those walls are coming down because God's on our side. He's the God of the impossible. He can do all things. Come on, let's keep walking and worshiping. Day three. Come on, this is the day. This is the day, I'm sure. Hey, do I see a bit of a crumble in that wall? Oh, no, it's just a rock falling from the top. Oh, come on. Come on, keep. No, no, come on. Don't worry about what's happening. Just worship. Just keep worshiping. Keep blowing that trumpet. Keep walking it out. Keep walking it out. Keep walking it out. Keep walking it out. Don't stop marching. You know, I think that breaks, one of the things that breaks my heart sometimes is when I, I see someone, like I remember the moment I realized Jesus died on the cross for me, that he forgave my sins. The moment I realized he died and hung on that tree for me. And if I was the only person on the planet, he still would have done it. And he came back to life on the third day so I could have forgiveness of sins and relationship with God in heaven forever. I still remember that day. And I love it when I see someone have that experience. And they're, they're, and they're pumped. This is how they run when they first become Christians. Ha <laughs> I'm, oh mate, come on. I'm a wall breaker. I'm going to take those walls down. Oh, come on. God's with me. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I'm a new Christian. I'm a new creation. Whoa. <laughs> oh, but hang on. Nothing's happening. There's no change. I'll go. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. And then people think, oh, it's not working. There's no change. The amount of time, it breaks my heart where people say, oh, it's not working. I've tried Christianity. It didn't work. 
It wasn't working. There was no change. The walls didn't come down. Well, let me tell you this morning, it has worked. He died on the cross and he came back to life once and for all. Our sins are forgiven and he is alive. It has worked. But we've got to walk out and work out our salvation. And I want to encourage you, don't give up. Just keep marching. And here's the thing I've found in the presence of God. If I just get up and read my Bible every day, if I just get up and worship every day, if I just get up and pray every day, if I just get up and give every day, if I just get up and serve every day, if I just get up and love people with the love of God every day, if I just get up and love my family, if I just get up and speak encouraging words, if I just get up and keep forgiving those that hurt me, if I just keep get up and living out what the Word of God can't, says, there's a seventh day anointing coming. There's a seventh day miracle coming. There's a seventh day breakthrough coming. But if I stop walking on the third day or the fourth day or the fifth day or the sixth day, I miss it. I miss it. And there are seventh day breakthroughs coming for our church. There are seventh-day anointings coming for your life. But what I feel God wants to impress on your heart today is don't stop marching. It's the daily disciplines that set you up for the seventh-day breakthroughs. I said to Ruby this morning as we're driving in, and I, we're coming in nice and early because we want to be prepared. I said, Ruby, I know you're fasting this morning. I know you're ready for this morning, but it's not about today. It's the fact that you got up and read your Bible on Monday. You got up and read your Bible on Tuesday. You got up and read your Bible on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and there's a seventh day anointing coming. <laughs> God's looking for a generation. He's looking for a generation that are going to just say, come on, I'm going to keep marching no matter what. I've got God's plan, but I'm not going to put the Netflix on and see what's on. I'm going to keep pushing through. I'm going to keep focused on what God says. And there might not look like a change, but I'm going to keep going anyway. Let me ask you this. On day three, four, five, and six, was God with them? Was God with them? Absolutely. He was right there with him in all his glory in all his presence they carried him around every time sometimes we don't see the walls come down as fast as we'd hoped and we think god's disappeared we think god is distant we start to maybe even maybe even blame god get upset with god because where are you these walls are meant to come down these walls of hurt, these walls of pain, the walls of murder in our city, the walls of drug abuse, the walls of addiction. These walls are meant to come down. God, where are you? He's right there. Yeah. He was right there on every lap. He was right there. He was just saying, come on. Come on, let perseverance build hope and hope build character. Let perseverance, James says, finish the work in you so that you will lack nothing and you'll become mature. God's looking for a church that's going to become mature, that says, I'm just going to keep walking. I'm going to keep marching. I'm going to keep worshipping. I'm going to keep serving. I'm going to keep giving. I'm just going to keep marching because I know there's a seventh anointing coming. I know there's a seventh day coming. I know the walls are coming down. But if I just do my bit, God will do his bit. Amen. Come on now. We live in an instant generation that looks for instant results. And I think I've got a picture up here of uh, a microwave dinner versus a nice slow-cooked meal. Whoa, I know, you're getting hungry now, aren't you? <laughs> Anyone ever had one of these? <laughs> when I'm desperate, I do. <laughs> you whack it in the microwave three, five, six minutes, and it kind of resembles food. <laughs> and you eat it. But I tell you what, I love it when Tracy says we're having a slow-cooked dinner today. When she wakes up early and prepares the meat, 
I help occasionally. I do the, I do the breakfast and the stir fries. <laughs> and she prepares it all and she puts it in the slow cooker. And we leave the house in the morning and she just turns the slow cooker on. And you come home in the evening and the smell of the food, the juices that have just been cooking all day. Oh, I tell you what, I love a slow cooked meal much more than a microwave dinner. God is not a microwave miracle worker. And in our instant generation who gets frustrated when our Netflix buffers, <laughs> in, our Netflix, in, our, in our instant generation that when we can't get to information within one click, we give up. Yeah. In our instant generation, when I go through the drive through at McDonald's and they tell me to pull into the bay, <laughs> hang on, I think you're missing the point here. <laughs> drive through. If I wanted to park up, I would have done that. <laughs> I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. <laughs> but we just do need to be careful that we don't let the culture of the world invade the culture of the kingdom that lives inside of us. Because God's miracles, I found, they want to be, they want to be in the glory of His juices. <laughs> marinating all day in his power, in obedience, in his word, and letting just the word and our, our confidence and our trust and our faith and our obedience and our, like we've sung before, before, through it all, I will praise you, that we are not determined by what is happening, whether if something good happens, we're up, something bad happens, we're down, but actually I'm going to praise through it all, that I'm actually going to let the word of God marinate in my life and I'm going to keep going round on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and even if it takes any longer, because today could be the day the walls come down, but I'm just going to keep walking anyway. I'm going to praise you whether the walls come down or I'm going to praise you whether the walls stay up. I don't care about the walls. I'm praising and worshipping our awesome God because he's with me and I'm carrying him with me. It doesn't matter where I go. The walls will be there all the time. There's going to be more walls, but God is with me. Come on, church. Come on, let's stand up and uh, I'm going to invite the worship team back and just keep marching. Just keep marching. Just keep marching. Hebrews 6.11 says this. We want each of you to show diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We don't want you to become lazy, but we want you to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what's promised. Hebrews 11.30, and I talked about this last, no, last week, says, how did the walls of Jericho fall? By faith. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. What does it say the next bit? It says, because the army marched around them for seven days. You know, this whole process took a week. And a week goes very fast, don't you find? <laughs> Weeks just seem to go very fast. But if you really break it down, actually a week is a long time. A, w a lot can change in a week. In our lives and the lives of our, you know, the, our nation, our world, the G7 summit, all this, everything can change so quick. So in some ways a week is a long time. But these guys had to get up and just do the same thing every day for six days and not see any change. But they were faithful, they were committed, and they did not give up. They kept worshipping no matter what. And they set themselves up for the seventh day breakthrough. And, and I, I don't want, I, I'll, I'll challenge myself. I thought about it as I prepared this sermon this week. Out of the last six days, how many days have I got up and read my Bible? How many days have I got up and prayed? How many days have I spent time worshipping? How many days have I given to other people? How many days have I served? How many, how many days have I just applied what God wants us to live out? It's actually not as easy as it sounds. But if we can grab this, 
this, I'm just going to keep walking. I'm just going to keep marching. I'm not going to give up, irrespective of the walls. Because God, you will take care of the walls in the right time. Amen. But that, that resilience, that determination, that commitment to say, I'm just going to keep walking. Amen. I'm going to ask the team to lead us in this song again. Just that last song we did, He is Lord, because He is Lord of all. Amen. He is Lord of Jericho. The same God that marched around Jericho is the same God that will help you march around anything that you've got to march around in your life. Amen. The same God who brought the breakthrough in those walls is the same God that's going to give you the breakthrough in whatever you're facing. But right now, as we worship, let a determination in your spirit just rise up to say, God, I will keep on marching. I will keep on walking. I will keep on worshipping no matter what happens at the walls. Some of you have got too used to looking at your walls. You've got so familiar with your walls, you're focused on the walls. But God's saying, lift up your eyes today, church. Don't look at the walls, but look at the God we worship. Amen. Come on.